something across straight past me. A building of heartbreak awaits the most haunted team as they land at one of America's remote lighthouses. <laughs> and this week I brought my team to sea and to a place that harbours strange occurrences and a mystery that needs to be solved. Welcome to Most Haunted and to the Ledge Lighthouse. Built at the beginning of the 20th century, the New London Ledge Light was a response to the increase in shipping around the harbour of New London. The lighthouse reportedly owes its distinctive French Second Empire style to wealthy homeowners on the local coast, who wanted the structure to reflect the elegance of their own homes. Originally, the keepers of the lighthouse were employed by the Lighthouse Board before it was taken over by the US Coast Guard in 1939. Crews worked three-man shifts, spending up to three weeks at the lighthouse, followed by six days on shore. It was generally considered to be an undesirable duty due to the solitude and its remoteness. One of the most famous tales from the lighthouse's history concerns a keeper who fell to his death from its roof. It is believed he committed suicide after his wife, back on shore, left him for another man. The ghost of this man is often referred to as Ernie, but his real name is thought to be John Randolph. In 1987, the new London Ledge Lighthouse was automated. As the last Coast Guardsman left, he entered in the log, Rock of Slow Torture, Ernie's Domain, Hell on Earth. May new London Ledge's light shine on forever, for I am through. I will watch from afar while drinking a brew. There are many strange things that occur in this very lonely place. Many people witness temperature changes when no windows are open, and it's thought that one spirit in particular walks around the lighthouse in anger, and doors slam shut or blast open when rooms are empty. The electrics have a life of their own as television sets turn on for no apparent reason, and people often feel that someone or something is standing next to them only to find that they're completely alone. Outside, the ghostly figure of a man has been seen staring out of the windows. The foghorn seems to turn on and off for no reason, and a very dutiful spirit is said to swab the decks. Securely tied boats have mysteriously been set adrift, and at night, strange lights can be seen from the shore. Some attribute these strange happenings to a number of spirits that roam the lighthouse, while some put the blame firmly on one distraught entity. He's thought to have been a keeper here in the 1930s, whose demise is open to a fair amount of conjecture. There are those who say he fell, others say he simply jumped, but many believe he cut his own throat before jumping from this building to his death. Whatever happened, it's agreed that this tragedy took place after his wife left him for another man. People lovingly call the ghost Ernie, although some believe his real name to be John Randolph, even though there's no record of a John Randolph ever being at this lighthouse. So who or what haunts this place? We have no shore leave and 24 hours to find out. Given its uneasy past, what does historian Leslie Smith make of the new London Ledge Lighthouse? Building work actually started in 1906 and was finished in 1909. It could be a hard and bitter job for the people who live there. Depressing, panic might set in, particularly if the home lives of some of those people was not as comfortable as they would like to think. Over the years, because of the distance of it and the mystery that can surround such a place, there have been many stories of ghosts. Whispering is heard, people going mad. 
And we do know that some of the people who stayed there were only there for a matter of weeks, simply couldn't bear, despite the two other people helping them as assistants, the solitude of the place, the madness of the place, and the endless, endless, relentless sound of the sea. Never as a team have we been faced with conducting an investigation into a site as remote and physically isolated as the new London Ledge Light. With this in mind, I asked parapsychologist Dr Kieran O'Keefe what his thoughts are prior to tonight's exploration. Uh, Kieran, you can't get more isolated than this place. And the most frightening thing is, is that there is nowhere to go. There's nowhere to run if we get truly terrified. I know, it, it is. I mean, it's fantastic to be here. It's dynamically different from any investigation that we've done before for Most Haunted. And what um, paranormal activity do you find the most intriguing here? Well, there's two aspects. In terms of genuine phenomena, I think the experiences that people are having in terms of a sense of presence, um, hopefully we can find a natural explanation for that. And I think it might be to do with infrasound caused by the generation system for the actual lighthouse. I think that's what's going on. At least early measurements say that that's the case. With some of the other experiences, the doors closing, slamming, people even perhaps seeing figures, it's a little bit more unusual, and I don't think infrasound can explain that. But the most intriguing thing for me is the character Ernie, or Randolph, I think the name has been given. The difficulty is there's no historical record for Randolph. Um, it's a name that has come from a medium. And so how much credence do we place in that? Do we see if Brian comes up with the same name or a different name? How much does the water play a part in this investigation? Will it cause um, people to feel dizzy, sick, make them think that it's a paranormal experience? Just looking out of the window at the waves, you're not looking at level land. You look outside the window, you see the waves moving, and it gives you that feeling of seasickness, of feeling giddy, of feeling dizzy. And yeah, people could misinterpret that as being paranormal presence. So it's something to watch out for later on. And the part that you're most looking forward to tonight? Everything. Everything. I know there's a basement, great. Even there is here, a basement. There's a basement. I know, there is a basement. But we do have to be careful, even though we are isolated, even being here now and, and looking in the background, there are ships, there are boats around, so we do have to be wary of those noises, but also seagulls as well. It could be very easy. We get whining sounds yes, on other investigations. We could hear a seagull and misinterpret that, so we've got to be very careful. Joined by medium and psychic artist Brian Shepherd, the Most Haunted team prepare to investigate the new London Ledge light. Brian has already sketched what he believes haunts this place. Will what he sees confront us during the course of the night? Something that rushed straight past me. The Most Haunted team are just off the coast of Connecticut. We're here to carry out a paranormal investigation into the new London Ledge Lighthouse, said to be plagued by poltergeist activity. We begin our inspection of this unmanned lighthouse with a walk around accompanied by parapsychologist Dr. Kieran O'Keefe and medium Brian Shepherd. I get a sense of a person here, a distinct sense of a person. A person who is searching, a person who, who lived here, obviously, his home was here, um, who's searching, who's had some distress, distress that led, I believe, to a tragedy taking place in this building. He took his own life. I feel a falling, a definite falling. Now, I walked around a little earlier and I've got this in various places. I'm getting it now. Do you, I want, just... to, do you want to move into a different area? Let's walk forward okay. to this area okay. and see if you get any, any str right. stronger feelings. A pacing about, a looking, a looking from windows I'm, I'm, I'm getting. Um, as though he's suffered a loss, a loss in the sense that not a death, not a loved one's death, if you like, but torn apart. So a, a divorce, a separation, uh, you know, something about his wife, OK? OK. There's something, something like that, which so distressed him eventually 
that he ended up taking his own life. How did he take his That's own life? Thing. As I said just now, a sense of falling. Somewhere, whether it's, and I don't think it was like stairs, okay, could have been from a window. I believe he either, he either threw himself from a window or, and I know, maybe no more in a moment. Can I ask um, who this gentleman is? Can you tell me his name? Because there have been many people here, they've given, they've given various names, and I want to know from you, you who you think he is. OK, some say Ernie, yes? Yeah. I say probably John. 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 Could be Roberts, could be... Uh, it's an R, I'm sure. John, R, okay. but I can't... I'm not going to make a call on that. It's yes. a bit cramped. Yeah. OK. OK. Right, Kieran? Yep, no problem. Right, so this is where you would did your drawing? This is where I sat, well, right here, actually, with my feet against the uh, stairs there, doing the drawing. And, uh, you know, the way I started off, as I always do, just sketch out the era I'm in. Um, but then, you know, what became apparent was an energy source. I mean, I had light coming in from the windows and light coming down from above. But then there was an energy source and another light occurred right on the stairs here. And I got every indication that someone was falling, a shape, um, probably a man. I felt, I felt it was a man. The shape is falling. Now, I mean, whether that is contained within here or outside the building, but it's strong up at this level. Also, I got tapping up here right, a couple okay. of times, you know. Right, OK. So definitely something... And do you think it's this John? Oh, yes, I do. Falling? Yes, I mean, that's that's what I feel, that, that, it, that it's this it's man. I mean, yeah. we've got... I, I believe that's that's his name, John, OK? OK. When was John here, time period-wise? <laughs> I would say nine... Well, here's a, here's a guess for me. 1930? Something like that, right. late 20s, 30. That's, that's what I feel. Was that when he killed himself, or was he here for a long time, do you feel? I don't really know how long he was, um, I mean, working here. I, I, I've no way of knowing that, to be, to, to be totally honest. But I feel that, you know, he is sort of anchored, his spirit is anchored here. Should we, um, should we go downstairs and find out where Leslie is in this fabulous house and find out how are we doing? Okay. So yeah. Right then, Kieran, do you I want to leap down? Yeah. <laughs> now then, how has Brian done? Remarkable. Yeah. Absolutely remarkable, because he's talking about this character, John, who was very distressed here, and you said his surname began with an R, didn't you? Yeah, I'm not getting the surname as such, but an R, yeah, yeah. definitely. And the date back 1930 is what you said, I think. Yeah. So what I'm saying is, um, he's right, in the sense that that's what the locals say, that's what local tradition says. Mm -hmm. During the period when this was run by civilians paid for by the local rich families before it went into formal receipt of the Coast Guard and therefore better record, we've got John Randolph or John Rudolph, a name like that, um, that keeps coming up all the time, but we can't prove it. It's a historian's nightmare. And no one can put the finger on exactly what the surname is. No, but, but they're the names, it sounds like that. And the story is that his wife ran off uh, with the ferry captain for the Black Island Ferry. Well, that seems very specific, doesn't it? Mm. Um, and as a result of that, um, he threw himself or fell from, indeed, where you've been, and the outside barrier that he'd climbed out and, and, and lost his life in that way. But I can't pen him... I mean, I can't say it definitely was here, but I can tell you a lot of people use this name over and over again with a similar name. But John's always there. The date's right. Uh, during it's, it's said between, say, 1925 to 1935. So that's pretty accurate. I think it's brilliant. Well, we shall see if, if John or whoever is here, whether they need our help. We will. Let's turn all the lights off and get going. Let's go. Oh, okay. Yeah, brilliant. Let's go.
Leslie's confirmation of Brian's findings leads us to believe that the spirit of John is still very much part of this desolate beacon. But as we switch to night vision and continue the investigation, will our beliefs be validated? John, you could be the one person that helps us. John, can you turn that light on again, if you can? It's on, it's on. It's on. Ah! The whole group make our way to the basement of the new London Ledge light and attempt to make contact with the spirit of John by conducting a Ouija board. If there are any spirits here, any spirits at all in this place, in this house, I ask you to walk down the stairs, walk through the walls, come up through the floor, make a noise, make yourself known to us. Introduce yourself. I'm Yvette. I'm Brian. I'm Leslie. I'm Carl. I'm Stuart. I'm Kath. Please come towards us all. Walk into this room and walk in towards the centre of this circle. Let yourself be known, please. If there is a man present with us now, and if it was... Did you hear that, then? Did you hear it? Hear what? Mm. That was a really loud. Yeah, oh, I didn't okay. hear it. Please, if that was you, come closer and again. Please, if that was you, come closer and again. Please, if that was you, come closer and again. I heard Got that it that time. Yeah. Come closer to us. Make the noise. Let us know that you're here, please, sir. There it was again. That was very, very clear. Mike, did you hear that? Yeah. You did? John. John, if you're with us, reach across. Reach across to... Reach across to me, one of my friends here, and touch them. Or make a noise. Just make a noise. Tap. But make us know you're here now. Come on, John. Make us know. Oh, cold, I was just thinking that then. <gasps> now, where was, was that? that? Where the hell was that from? You all heard that behind me. Yeah. Yeah. It's gone cold, I was just thinking that then. It's gone cold, I was just thinking that then. It's right here, Brian. Was it on your stomach? You sure it wasn't your stomach no. then? No, my right tummy here. is fine. Let's put our fingers on the glass and see if they're here. That's what. That was a cold blast to my yeah. mind. Is anybody here, John, if this is you? Or indeed any other spirit person here, we come to talk to you. It's going. What's that? J. J. Okay. Continue. Sorry. Oh. 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 Continue. You join us. Get a bit of speed up. <clears throat> H. Continue. What's that? And um, John. 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 Okay. Hello, John. Did you kill yourself? Did you kill yourself, John? Mm. Oh! Yes. I can't hold it. Can you tell us the year that you killed nice. yourself? Tell us the year that you killed yourself, John. You hear that up there? Not clicking, up there. Tell us the year you killed yourself, John. John, please tell us the year you killed yourself. Can you remember? What's that mean? P? Between P and Q, I don't know. Give us a year, John. Go to the numbers. A year. Oh, what was that? Jump, the glass jumped. What was that? What's that one? Oh. Mm. What was it? Three, Three and then 36. I'm sorry to ask, John. Were you so deeply unhappy because your wife didn't want to be married to you anymore? Is this why you ended your life? Yes or no, John? Yes. Right. Good. Okay. 
we'll move from here now, we'll move around the rest of the house, but you have to help us. Mm -hmm. We're here for a reason to prove that there is life after death, mm -hmm. but you have to help us. Okay. Thank you, thank you yes, very thank you, much. John. With what we believe to be the spirit of John, the lighthouse keeper said to have taken his own life, making his presence felt. We decide to split into two groups. Kieran, Brian, Leslie, Kath and myself are making our way up to the upper floors of the lighthouse, while Carl and Stuart stay below to further investigate the basement. John, if you're here, make a sound. All right. What the hell is that, Carl? Did you hear it? Yeah, let me turn that viewfinder around. Sean, if you're here, please do something for us. If I whistle, can you whistle back? John, if you're here, we're going to whistle. Carl. Please, what? Well, I've just heard a whistle. Where? I don't know where it's come from. I've just heard a whistle. Thank you, John, if that's you. I'm going to whistle again. Please, can you, can you whistle back? <whistles> you didn't hear that, Me. Carl. Okay, John, you were... thank you so much. I can't get over that. Yes! <laughs> yes! Oh, f that's gone off. Look. What? What? There, there the light just went in there. Turn that on. Can you turn the light on again? Look, in, look in there. Look in yeah, there. yeah, I'm looking look. in, I'm looking in, I'm looking in. John, if you're there, please turn the light on again. No way. That came on, didn't it? It did. John, please, if it's you that's doing the whistling, please turn the light on again on the stairs. Nothing. It came, definitely came on. I, I'm sure I saw... Yeah, no, got, yeah, no. John, can you whistle back again? He's not asking too much, is it? No, is keep asking, asking, keep asking. I'm going to put us in shot, so... I'm just going to zoom in a bit there. Focus. OK. John, I'm going to whistle again, please. I'm not asking you to do tricks. I'm just asking you to communicate with us. Can you communicate with the people upstairs? Please reply for a whistle, with a whistle. Cal. John, can you turn that light on again? If you can. It's on, it's on, it's, it's on. on. It's on, it's on, it's off. I saw it, I saw it. The, ca the camera got it, the camera got it, the camera got it. It's on, it's on, it's, it's on. on. It's on, it's on, it's off. I saw it, I saw it. It's on, it's on, it's on. It's on, it's on, it's, it's, on. it's, on. it's off. I saw the lights here for that. There's probably one upstairs, I guess, but I can't think that's the wrong one. This is the light. That, that's it. The light switching on and off could indicate a paranormal presence in the basement, but will we find further evidence of poltergeist activity as the night continues? John! What was that? What was that? <laughs> the most haunted team are investigating the supposedly haunted New London Ledge light off the coast of Connecticut. Carl and Stuart are investigating the basement, where already they have experienced some very strange goings-on, believed to be caused by a former lighthouse keeper called John. 
Kieran, Brian, Leslie, Kath and I are venturing to the upper floors of this abandoned lighthouse. Will we also be witness to strange phenomena? Footsteps upstairs, that's the place to go. Just yeah, listen to the whistle. Just turn it again. John! <gasps> what was what that? What was that? John! <gasps> John! <gasps> John, you could be the one person that helps us. <laughs> what the? What that? What was that? Something brushed straight past me. Well, get up the bloody stairs, don't leave me up here. Something brushed straight past me. Let's get up the stairs. Get up. Please, come no, upstairs. Please? You're all right, right? You're yeah, all right, no, right? something brushed straight past. I'm sorry to have shattered it like that. Uh, now, was it, Ryan? Believe me, Karen, if I could totally tell you that, I would. It just, like, a shape, a figure just brushed straight past me in cold breath, you know. John? John? John, can you copy? Please, let us know that you're listening to us, at least. Right, Kath? Um, um, I think I felt really brave and then um, Brian really kind of unnerved me. I'm sorry. Yeah, well, you know, for, it'll, it'll unnerve me when the gust of wind, but I felt when on top of the window's wide open there, look. Do you feel him here, Brian? It's not that great standing here. Where is it I'm best? I'm listening and I'm drawn to upstairs. Mm. But um, it's difficult, I mean, because we can't all go upstairs. Well, we can, we can all sit in a circle, actually. It's, it's time to create, so. Well, maybe, Kath, do you want to go up there, love, on your own? Do you want me to come Ooh, up Oh, what was too? that? <gasps> Did you hear that? Did you hear the tapping? No, you hear that tapping, then. No. Yeah, One foot, which is what we heard before when we were here. Yeah, and again. Most of what I've heard. Oh, is Kath moving? What's that? Okay, ooh. What are you getting up there? Ooh. What? What? I'm getting. Okay. Yeah. Ooh. 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 Getting what? Ooh. Oh, you ooh. were. Oh, it's an electrical. Is it? Can I go upstairs? Is it? Should I just wait here for a minute? Yeah, that's where I was Got sitting when I did the drawing. Down. Okay. John, please. Bang or tap once if you can hear our voices. <gasps> Flipping it. Did you not hear that? Who was that? John, or are there any other spirits that are here? Can you please make a sound? Can you knock on something? Oh, oh did you yeah. hear that? Is <laughs> that no, hang on. Was that coming from above? Did you hear that up there? No, it's not moving. from it's not from us. Right. But are you Definitely hearing not. that up there, Kieran? Kath is hearing it clearer than I am, but she's nearer the opening. It's right. definitely coming from your area. Right, good, because Leslie and Brian and myself, all three of us heard a footstep right by us. Call out again, Kath. John, are you here? I heard that. Look at that noise, is that? Not the footstep, the noise is coming from above us. That's the uh, light. Okay. Please, John, can you make a noise? Can you tap on something louder? Whoa, 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 la 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 la, we're getting rattling here. Please, louder. We've got a door, door turning. 
and asked you back to do it. Did you back in? No. Oh, yeah. Well, when you when you were yeah. calling, we've got a door knob moved. We well, the whole door moved, yeah. I believe. Mm. No, what I saw was just that knob. We just do it again. Mm. Like that. Yeah. That's what that was. So what it was. Like someone reached down. It wasn't like that. It was like that. Right. Okay. John, I know what you've given us is is fantastic. It really is, and we both appreciate it. We sure do. But. Is there any chance you could show yourself to us? We're hearing lots of things, but that's that's about it. Where the hell did that come from then? Hello? You throw something at us? After Carl and Stuart report their findings to Kieran, he decides to investigate using a thermal image camera. Accompanied by Kath, Leslie and myself, Kieran heads straight to the basement in search of any unexplained drops in temperature. Have you got anything, Kieran? Um, well, if there's any truth to the green being represented as spirit rather than the breeze, then he's standing at the door. Right, I can see that green shape. I think that's where oh. Carl said earlier that they thought he saw somebody stood. John, I think we can see you. Oh, it's increasing. Yeah. Step forward, and don't be feared of us. We care about you. We're worried that you had such a bad and distressing time here because of Anne. Carl, Stuart, and Brian are investigating the upper floors, where Brian has already sensed the presence of a spirit named John. Okay. <laughs> Brian! You all right, mate? Again? We're here. Where's this place? She's going to the crap me. out of me, then. Where's it gone? It, this is what? straight past me. Almost down. There is a cold spot here. It's bloody freezing yeah, there, there, there is a window open. We've got to note that. But it was straight past me. Yeah, but that's not like a... It's not a that'll be a breeze. This is a cold spot. It's not exactly moving what we had with the women when I was coming up with them. Okay. Right, Brian. Scared the crap yeah. out of me then. Bloody hell. I want to shut these windows. Yeah. I don't know what to feel now after coming up them stairs and Brian panicking like that because that's well, the hell I'm sorry. Out. It's so no, it's fine. It, it, it happened before when I came up with the women. Something brushed straight past me and basically I walked through it again. It didn't seem to move. <laughs> we didn't open this door, did we, when we came in? Oh no. We Which just door? Walked through it. Didn't know there was one. That was open already. Why? It's got a handprint on it. Oh, Frank, has anybody touched it? No, don't you. That's what I mean, that, and I thought it might be a question. I've just saved JPEG images of it. It's hot. Oh. So we're looking out the doorknob there, That's the, the red door. bits. The red bits indicate heat, which would make me think that something. <laughs> what the f was that? <laughs> I've lost night vision. Oh. I've got it. Oh. How do you know? It's up there, it's up the stairs. <laughs> John, if you're up here, 
Show yourself to us. Please show yourself to us, John. John, come on. John. Frank. Tell me that was one of you. Come on. Come on. No, it wasn't. It wasn't one of us. And thank you, John. You've been here many times. What the? That's coming from down there, that car. I've got the camera down there because it sounds like it's from there. Is anyone there? That's similar to what we heard downstairs. Yeah, it was. The John, is that you? John. It's downstairs, Carl. Downstairs, what? John, I'm aware you're with us. You came this way, didn't you? He came this way. He opened the door. He stepped out. And he threw himself off. Suppose paranormal activity is really building as Brian feels he's in the presence of John's spirit, at the point where John is believed to have taken his own life. What further frights are in store for us in this most haunted of lighthouses? Oh, be careful, Brian. Ah! The Most Haunted team are deep into an investigation into the new London Ledge Lighthouse, with our initial investigations revealing a spirit called John, a former lighthouse keeper said to have taken his own life. Brian, Carl and Stuart are focusing their efforts at the top of the lighthouse, the very spot John is believed to have committed suicide. Threw himself off there. Uh, yeah, go on, Brian. Watch your door. Careful, Brian. Just step up over, didn't you? Climb down there. Climb down there onto the roof. Are you threw yourself down, didn't you? I'll stay here. Oh, be careful, Brian. Oh, you've got my arm. I've got your arm, don't you? All right. right. Same, exactly that same feeling. All right, I'm fine, I'm fine. You know I had that on the stairs? Yes, you did. But straight past, it must have come past you, Stu. And straight out. I just feel a bit wobbly, mate. I don't know if that's got anything to do with what's here or whether we're on sea, I don't know. Sorry. It's fine. Who's that? What the hell? Hang on a minute. Did something get thrown down there? No, I thought someone was coming up. We've, we've got what happened, basically. That he came up, he rushed up the stairs, he pushed this door open. Right. He stepped down, or jumped down onto this roof. Okay. And he threw himself <coughs> off the flat roof. What, so he committed suicide? He then? committed suicide, yeah. Off here? Look. There, look. He jumped down there and throw yourself off. Ah! Someone's got to go down there. I can't get down there, mate. Have a look. Get the out of me, that. Yeah, point, point that down there. Let's go in. See if you can see anything. If there's anyone down here, we'd have heard him. We'd have heard him get down those stairs. But what was it? Should we go down and have a look, Carl? Shall we? No. John, are you here? Is he here, Brian? He's very much here. Very much here. Yeah, don't feel the temperature drop here. John. Okay, yeah. No. It's you, isn't it, on the stairs? It's you we felt rushed past. It's you who rushed up the stairs and opened the door. Open the door to the roof. You can feel, oh! Shh. What's that? A rush of cold air and... A window slammed. Door something slammed. or this door. Was this door closed, Carl? Where are you, Stuart? I'm here with Brian. Where? What, that here at the top of the stairs, but... There door. was a rush. Hang on a minute. 
it's just the same door. There was an almighty it? rush of cold air yeah. and it sounded like a door being closed and I'm not sure if that door was open or not to be honest with you. That was a window. That's just closed that car. You left that open before, didn't you? I left one, two, three. I left that one. Hang on. Hello? Shine your torch down there, Carl. This is there. Where? What's that? I'll uh, that. I it, bet that's what was keeping the window open. Looks like a peg. Should I pick it up? Yeah, pick it up. It's a wooden dowel. Yeah, I bet you one of these windows is very loose and it needs some sort of dowel to hold it open. There you go. Really? How perfect is that? There you go. Oh, Now, I'm just saying to oh. pick to, to move it. It's, it's behind it's there. there. It's it's Again, noise downstairs. We continued to investigate this desolate lighthouse until the storm of night ebbed to the calm of day. Our experiences here have been remarkable, but I'm keen to get the thoughts of the ever-questioning Dr. Kieran O'Keefe on the strange goings-on in the new London Ledge Light. Most Haunted's investigation of the lighthouse didn't reveal any fantastic phenomena. However, there were some very intriguing moments. Carl and Stuart were in the basement, and Stuart heard a whistle. Carl started communicating with the alleged spirit and getting a whistling response. However, it's not controlled enough for me to say whether this is paranormal or not. By far the most intriguing phenomena that happened on the whole investigation was on this vigil with Carl and Stuart when they're in the basement. At some point, Carl saw the light go off. Then Carl and Stuart stood at the foot of the steps in the main part of the basement with the light on on the stairs and instructed the spirit to switch the light off. The light did indeed go off. Now this is fantastic because what you can actually see on the video footage is Carl and Stuart down in the basement, but also footage of the rest of the team elsewhere in the lighthouse and nowhere near the stairs. Because of this footage, we can safely say that nobody was switching the light on and off. At some point, the girls and myself conducted a vigil down in the basement and so we got some very interesting phenomena on the thermal imager. Uh, we were able to attribute one of the thermal imaging phenomena down to a breeze that was coming through, but later on we did get a heat source on the knob of the door. Now this could have been somebody's handprint from earlier on, but it's difficult to say. All in all, I'm very impressed with the Most Haunted Team investigation of the lighthouse. It was a very, very unique location, and like I said, some intriguing moments. The most haunted investigation into the new London Ledge light has been an unforgettable experience. Again, we have encountered unexplainable events of a paranormal nature. But have we proved beyond doubt that the spirit of lighthouse keeper John forever wanders this desolate beacon in search of eternal rest? It's up to you to decide. Until next time, sleep tight.